Good afternoon, everybody. So happy to be here today. Combine is a framework that was introduced alongside SwiftUI last year in 2019. And it, it powers a lot of key features in SwiftUI, and um, that's why I wanted to talk about it. It's, it's a functional reactive uh, programming framework, and we've already seen a little bit of functional programming today. Um, so I won't be explaining what functional programming is or what exactly Combine is. Instead, I wanted to zoom in today on the core that makes up Combine. Because while I was learning Combine and figuring things out, I saw that there were really three pillars in Combine. So that's what I want to cover today. The first of these pillars is the publisher. And what you're looking at on screen right now is a relatively simple combined publisher. It's a data task publisher, and it's combined's flavor of making a URL request. You've probably used a normal data task on URL session. But this on its own doesn't really give us much because we're not receiving any values from this request. And unlike the old way where we would pass a closure to the data task, we need to subscribe to it to get its values. We can do that with a sync. A sync is a kind of subscriber, which I will talk about more, but it allows us to receive values from a publisher. A sync takes two uh, closures, one that's called when a publisher completes, so after it has emitted its final value, and the other is called whenever a publisher emits a value. So in this case, that would be the result of our URL request. Now what's important here is that I am assigning the result of this call to the sync method to a property. You can see it here, I call it sub. And when I first tried to use combine, I did not do this, and I noticed that my URL request never fired or never succeeded. So I started looking at the documentation for sync, and I found out that something interesting goes on when you call sync, which is this in the documentation. When you call sync, you get back a cancelable instance. So I wasn't sure what that was at first, so I was like, okay, fine. I can cancel something, that's good. But then I saw that deallocation of this object will result that everything is torn down. It, torn, it tears down the subscription stream. So what's that mean? What even is a subscription stream, I thought. So I started looking into that, and I found out that whenever you call sync in Combine, so when you subscribe to this publisher, this is what your code looks like, roughly. But then inside of this sync method, a subscriber is created. In this case, it's a sync subscriber. And that subscriber then subscribes to our publisher, which in this case is the data task publisher. And the publisher itself receives this subscriber and it creates a so-called subscription, which is an object that I had never really seen before before I learned about this. And it's very well hidden from us as developers, but it's actually really important, as we'll find out throughout this talk. So after creating this subscription, the publisher then connects this subscription to the subscriber. And that's really all it does for some reason. Even though you would think that a publisher does everything, what happens after this? is that the subscriber asks the subscription for values. The subscription then in turn will obtain these values. And it does so by either calculating them on its own, or it can use a third object to create the values, which could be the publisher or could be anything else. What's important here is that the subscription is asked to do something, obtain values, and it will through one way or the other. Once it has a value for us, it will send this value, and the subscriber receives the value. And this goes on and on and on until sometimes it could go on forever, but usually publishers complete at some point, and they do this only once. So a publisher either completes successfully, it does the job it needed to do and it's now done, or it completes with an error. It tried to do something, but somewhere along the way something went wrong and we failed. This could be after receiving or sending many values to a subscriber, and at some point, we just blow up. But we only complete once. And then, of course, the subscriber receives this completion event, so it knows what happened. So that's a lot of information here, but what we can kind of take away from this is that publishers create subscriptions, 
and they connect these subscriptions to subscribers. And in turn, subscriptions, they obtain values. They either do this by generating them or they receive them from an external source. And they relay these obtained values to subscribers. I added here that they only do this if demand is high enough. I already mentioned that a subscriber will ask a subscription for values. And that at that point, the subscription will begin to generate these values. And as they are sent, the subscriber will ask more values from the subscri subscription. We'll talk about that more later. It's a very interesting part of Combine, actually. So how we're going to figure all this out, or how I would like to show how this works to you, uh, is by implementing our own version of sync. So to start, what we're going to do is just redefine sync, right? It's the best way to go about something like this, figure out how it works, just re-implement it. So in this case, I prefix the sync method with my initials to make sure that it's very obvious that we're working on something custom here. And just like the normal sync, this custom version of sync takes a completion, closure for the, the completion event, and receive value closure for the rest of the events. So inside of this sync, what we need to do is we need to create the subscriber, which is an instance of an object called DW sync. Uh, I'll show you that, op that uh, definition in a moment. But it's the same as the sync class that is used by combine internally. After creating this, we call self.subscribe, because self in this case is a publisher since we're working in an extension on publisher. And we pass the subscriber to this subscription, uh, to the publisher. And then we return an any cancelable. Now any cancelable is, just like the normal sync, a cancelable object that if we don't hold on to it, it wants to cancel whatever subscription, subscriber it's holding. So perfect, this kind of matches what we needed if we wanted to re-implement sync. So once we have that, that's fantastic. But because sync is a subscriber, uh, sorry, we need to define our custom sync. And sync is a subscriber. So we look at the subscriber protocol to see what the DW sync needs to do. A subscriber has an input and a failure as its associated types. These input and failure have to match whatever a publisher wants to send in case it has a value or in case it fails to complete, or it completes with a failure. There are also three flavors of the receive method that every subscriber needs to implement. The first matches the step that I outlined where the subscription that a publisher creates is connected to the subscriber. The second receive method is called whenever a subscription sends a new value, and the third receive flavor is called whenever a subscription wants to send us an completion event. So let's look at how to implement these in an example. So we define our custom sync here. And I omitted the initializer here, but you can imagine what it looks like. It would take the receive completion and receive value closures. And these methods here really just match what we just saw. So let's implement those as well. The first receive method is called whenever we receive a subscription. Now, because we're not sure if a publisher holds on to its subscription, we also need to hold on to the subscription. So I added an instance variable here that would be added to the sync, so we can hold on to our subscription. And then we request an unlimited amount of items from this subscription. Now, what does that mean? There are two other things that we could do here. We could either request a maximum amount of values, or we could request no values. Now, I know that the sync that Combine uses internally requests an unlimited amount of items. But if we would request a maximum amount of items, we could, for example, say, you know what, just give me one item. Or we could say, give me no items at all, and the subscription would not start to do any work. Because like I said, a subscription will only generate values if the subscriber wants to receive them. So we'll look at this a little bit more after the next slide. Because there was another flavor of receive, the input. And that returns an object subscriber's demand. So in our implementation, what we do is when a subscription sends a value to our sync, we just forward that to the closure that we passed it. 
but we also return a demand of none. So if we would do this, and this would be a very generic subscriber, you might think, hey, wait a second, we're requesting values, and then suddenly now that we have a value, we don't want any more values? That's weird, right? But the way demands work is additive. So let's look at an example. Let's say when we receive a subscription, we would initially ask for only one item. This means that a subscription will now have a demand of one, and it will only pass one item to our subscriber. And then when the subscriber receives this single value, it can return a new demand, and it could be five. And because this demand is additive, the subscription will now generate a total of six items. So that means that after this first item or value, we will receive five more values. Now, if in the next step we return none, we're still going to get these six values. So in the example that we are building now, we request an unlimited amount of values initially. So throughout the whole chain of events, we'll always receive an unlimited amount of values, no matter what we return from the received value, because there's no way to decrease demand. We can only increase it and combine. So when is that useful, you might wonder? Well, it's typically very useful if you are doing some kind of asynchronous processing in your subscriber, and you're fine with dropping events. Like if you receive an event, you want to process it, you could r return none from the receive method, and then after you have processed the value, you can manually request new values from the subscription. This is called back pressure management, and it helps you avoid from backing up your subscriber's processing capabilities. Okay, so that was the second receive method that we just implemented. The third one is called when we complete. This pretty much speaks for itself. We want to forward this completion event to the closure that we pass to the sync method. The last method that I had as a placeholder was cancel. This just nails out the subscription. Because like I said, we're not sure if the publisher is holding on to this subscription. We want to do it. But we also don't want to hold on to it if we're canceling this whole thing. So if the subscription doesn't need, uh, the subscriber doesn't need a subscription anymore, it should nil it out because there's no reason to handle it, to hold on to it. Okay, so at this point we have implemented a lot of the chart that I just showed you. Everything that's highlighted is now present. And what's really cool is that we can already use the custom sync method and the custom sync object that we created. If you're struggling to see the difference here, I'm really happy because the only difference is the sync that we're using. Because DW sync is defined as an extension on publisher, it should work with any publisher that Combine has. And this is really cool because this allows you to put a lot of custom logic hidden inside of a subscription that is not going to clutter up your API. But we're not done because I said that we were going to re-implement this entire thing. So we're also going to implement the data task publisher. But before I do that, I have to warn you a little bit, is that Apple does not really recommend that you go and implement all kinds of custom publishers and subscriptions. In most scenarios, whatever Apple has to offer out of the box should be more than enough for you to build a really good app. Okay, but let's just implement the publisher anyway. The publisher protocol tells us that a publisher has an output and a failure which makes sense because a subscriber has to take an input and it also has to take a failure and these two have to line up. And you can see this by the publisher's receive method because that dictates that whatever subscriber it receives, its output must match the publisher's, uh, the input for the subscriber must match the publisher's output. And the failure types of the two must match as well. Now in the chart that I showed you before, I said that we call subscribe on a publisher, not receive. So why are we going to implement a receive method? The reason for that is that a publisher has several subscribe methods, and they all eventually call this receive method here. Okay, so that's the protocol. Let's implement this. First, we define a skeleton, and because this publisher is very specific, we can specialize the input and error. Uh, I took note of what data task publisher does out of the box, so I'm mimicking that here. 
the receive method on the publisher has, like we know, has to create a subscription. In this case, it's a data task subscription that I will show you in a second. After creating the subscription, it has to connect the subscriber it's receiving to this new subscription. And that's all it does. So publishers in combined can be really simple, just like this one. I'm not saying they all are, because we don't know what Apple does on the inside of a data task publisher. But I found that with this code, I can make this work. So it's very good. Now let's look at what this, the, the subscription does, because that is slightly more complex. Its requirements tell us something else. Because I just said it's very complex, and we only need to implement a request method. So what's up with that? Well, let's just look at the skeleton code. First of all, we have two variables, or one variable, one constant. The subscriber, because we're going to send values to the subscriber that is connected to the subscription. So we're going to need to hold on to that. And also the URL request that we're going to execute. The request method will be implemented in a second. And the cancel method that I have implemented only nails out the subscriber. Because any subscription in combine has to also conform to cancelable, which says that we need to implement this method. Okay, so what does that request demand method look like when we implement it? Well, it's a lot of code, but I'm sure it looks somewhat familiar. This is just the good old way of executing a data task. And the most interesting bit is right here in the middle. Because if we receive an error from our URL request, we're just going to tell the subscriber immediately that we complete with failure. If we get data in response, which should happen if the request went to the server and came back, we're going to tell the subscriber about the data and result that we received. And we're also going to call the completion method, because we're done. We're only going to emit a single event. And then we cancel ourselves because we don't want to keep anything around. And that wraps up the subscription. So this code that we had with my custom sync, what do we need to do to use my custom publisher? Well, it's really simple. We only need to use the custom object. And with this, we can use a custom publisher with a custom subscription and a custom subscriber. So let's go over it one more time. What happens on the inside? When sync is called, we create a new subscriber, and we assign this subscriber to the publisher. The publisher then creates a subscription, connects this subscription to the subscriber. The subscriber asks for values from the subscription, which will then start obtaining these values, sends them back to the subscriber, which receives the values. This goes on and on and on until a subscription completes and sends the completion over to the subscriber. So we've implemented all of this just now. And there's just a few things that I want to leave you with. First of all, I already mentioned it, but don't do all of this. Implementing custom subscribers is probably a good idea, but custom publishers and custom syncs, uh, custom subscriptions, it's unlikely that you're going to need to do that. However, it's, it is good to do this kind of stuff to explore and learn. And lastly, because that's what started all this, hold on to your any cancelable objects, because if everything is implemented correctly in Combine, as soon as the any cancelable is gone, your entire subscription stream is too. With that, I would like to thank you.